Hello, my name is Pradeep Haripran and in this video, I will be giving you few guidelines to how to do your BA English project. This is uh, recommended for the Calicut University English syllabus, which was revised in the year 2019. So let's get inside. So as I told you, this presentation is about how to do your BA English project. This is applicable only for English students not for any other branch of students to successfully uh, with reference to 2019 admission onwards what is this video all about in this video i will be giving you three things the first one is about the five guidelines actually there are more guidelines in your syllabus but i have selected five of them and i will also provide you six tips to do your project successfully and also, I will provide you with three tools that if you use well, you can, your project will be superb. So, this, this is the structure of the video. What are the guidelines? The first rule of Calgary University says that the project should be from English literature background. That is, you have to choose a topic from English literature background. It could be a movie, it could be a novel, a play. You should not go beyond it. Okay, so you have to limit to your research something related to the background of English literature. Second thing is that you can take topics either from your syllabus or from outside syllabus. But it's clearly specifically written that if you take your topics from outside your syllabus, you will be given more grace marks. So if you want grace mark, go outside the syllabus. If you don't want grade mark, stick to your syllabus. Third one is that uh, it, you can't help it. Basically, it is recommended that students do their project individually. But uh, you know, the class strength have gone really high. So you'll be doing in a group manner. But when you're doing a group project, just go something extra. Instead of working on a single movie or a single book, I always recommend you at least take two books because it's a collective effort. Three of you are working. So in a group project, try to do a little challenging so that you can get some good marks. And uh, if you look at the project, it's been divided into fifth and sixth semester. In the fifth semester, you'll be doing the selection of the topic, writing a synopsis, submitting it, and getting permission. And in the sixth semester, you'll be completing your project. So the last guideline is about the documentation actually a project has to be documented based on mla handbook in your syllabus it says eighth edition actually in 2019 mla eighth edition was involved but two or three months back the ninth edition has come so please do consult with your tutor by the, at the time of your submission that is march 2022 then most probably you'll be following the ninth edition. There are only minor changes, but I always ask you uh, to what you may consult with your tutor. Okay, so now about the synopsis that you have to do in the fifth semester. What is a synopsis? Synopsis is like a route map. For example, if you are going planning to go to Mumbai, what will you do? You will just make a route map about so that you may reach in Mumbai that you don't reach in Goa, sorry, or Hyderabad. So similarly, if you're doing a project, it is always advisable to write a synopsis in advance because most often students get deviated as they start working on the project. So the first thing is to identify a title. Title is very important. It has to be catchy. It has to be short. So choose a title, spend some time on your title. Then what are your objectives? Be specific, don't go for some wide objective because you don't have that much time you have to write your third fourth fifth semester exams in the same year so ultimately choose a small objective which is doable in the time limit and then review of literature actually when you're doing your project you have to do some background research that is known as the review of literature what others have done then third one is the methodology for literature naturally the textual analysis is our methodology and the last one is the bibliography. Actually, before starting your research work, you have to assume what are the books that have to read it. So this is known as a kind of an anticipated bibliography. This keeps on changing 
but it is always advisable to write this in the fifth semester itself. So, as I told you, synopsis is like a route map. It will always help you to take you to your destination, which you can always alter, but you need a blueprint. Just imagine you are constructing a house. You need a plan. Without plan, you cannot construct a house. Similarly, when you are doing a project, you need a basic plan. If you have a plan, you can work on it. Okay, now go on to the next stage, the second part of the video, which are the six tips that I would like to provide. This is my personal tips. Uh, you can take it or leave it. Actually, the first one, as I told you, choose a relevant book and a realistic task. Okay, actually relevant book means so don't go for old work. As I told you, if you look at the assessment criteria, they always give importance to new works. Actually, I have, uh, I'm doing another video in which I will give you some of the latest topics uh, that you can do with your project. Don't copy that one, but it will give you an idea of how to do a project. So choose a relevant one. Second one, always remember that there are two aspects of research. The first one is doing research. Second one is writing about it. I have seen that most students, they do research well, but they don't write well. So whenever you start doing your research, you have to take your notes in a proper manner. Otherwise, by the end of the research, you would have read a lot of things, but you don't have something to write about. So remember the two sides of research. One is doing research. The second thing is about writing. And third thing, as I told you, when you're doing your research from the beginning itself, you must know what is the specific goal of your research? What is the outcome of your research? Basically, when you go for your viva goals, they will ask you, what is the objective of your research? So if you say, sir, I have no objective, that defeats the purpose. So from the beginning, have an objective. Okay, this is what I want to identify in this world. Okay, the third one is always aware of the assessment criteria. The whole purpose of doing a research is to complete your degree. Okay, so you need to get high marks for your project. Actually, in the next slide, I will tell you about what are the assessment criteria. So keep the assessment criteria in mind, then prepare your project. And the fifth one, most important is always back up your data. These days, we do our research in the laptop or mobile phone. And remember, these things can get crashed. So always back up your data. It is always advisable. And the last one, very important, always keep a specific timetable for doing a project. Because as I told you, you'll be writing a lot of exams in video. So there are going to be a lot of distractions and disturbances. So it is always nice to have an, a, a timetable like, okay, this month I will complete this much work. This month I will finish reading. This month, by this month, I will write my first draft. So keep a plan in your mind and work it on. That is going to help you. Now we come to the third part. Before the third part, let's look at the assessment. As you know, this time the project is for 75 marks. Up to last year, it was up to 50 marks. Out of 75 marks, 50 marks are for your internal and 60 for the external. If you look at the internal side, it's being divided into four uh, based on originality, methodology. Since you know, most of our teachers are very liberal, so I'm not dealing with that part. Let's go to the external part. How the marks are awarded? externally. This you have to keep in mind. First thing is the relevance of the topic. That's why you repeatedly say choose a topic, something that is relevant. Choose a movie or a book that has been published recently within the last five years or six years or that is something relevant, that is something new. That will give you marks. Okay. The second thing is about doing the referencing. How you do referencing? As I told you, MLA 8th or 9th edition. Uh, referencing specifically inside in-text referencing and also the bibliography. How to do bibliography well, I will tell you in this video itself. So please uh, listen a little bit more. And uh, the third one is about what are the findings you have done and your why bar. So this is how the external evaluation is done based on uh, 60 marks, 18 marks of a why bar. And uh, for originality 12, relevance 12, and your findings and recommendations 18. It is always advised to recommend something in a project. Okay, towards the end of conclusion, Actually, a project doesn't end with our work. So if you can recommend, okay, these are the areas that I found to be uh, done research. This is going to give you an extra edge. And coming to the third and final part, what are the three tools that you have to use your doing your project? Generally, I have seen that the students just work in a laptop. They we work on Microsoft Word. I recommend instead you do on a Google Doc. The advantage of Google Doc is that 
since you are working in a group, if three people can open at the same time and work on it. So if you want to type in editing, so this is like a, it works like magic. And secondly, it always backs up your data. It, it never gets lost. Okay. And whenever you work on Google Doc, install Grammarly. Grammarly is a free website. And if you type anything, it will automatically correct the errors. It will show you the basic grammar errors and also spelling errors. So this is, and it's, it makes your work so easy if you use Grammarly. So Google Doc along with Grammarly, Google Doc itself will show you some of the errors. But with Grammarly, it is like what you may call a toast. Okay, it's a cream on top of your cake. And the third one, as I told you, the bibliography, which will fetch you a lot of mark. There's a website known as www.ecdip.com. Again, use the free version. You, you just, just type your website or the name of the book. It will automatically convert into MLA 8 or 9. Okay, so you just need to copy and paste it. So that will save your time. So with that, I end my video. I hope it was useful to you. If you have any doubts, comments, just leave it in the box. And also don't forget to remember the other video in which I have shared the 20 latest hot topics in that. So thank you very much. Wish you all a good project work.